I'm Regina Loy. I'm the wife from Jean Ross and mother uh, for our children. I'm working as a nurse and a naturopath. I just tried to tell you in a few words how my uh, experience are with, during the time where I live with Jean. My husband is a nice, lovely person. He tried to give the world answers how the things turn how they do. But with this try to became a lot of but with this try he became a lot of stones and rocks of his way. These rocks and stones make him difficult to live how he feel to. This situation now is really heavy for all of us in this family. The situation with the policemen for more than three years have found now the top. They needed all this time for change to find how they can change the lie into a, one of the thousands of laws. But one thing have never changed. It is a lie. My man is not a criminal person. I know it because I would never stay with him such a long time if it would be another way around. All in, in this past time the association done a lot with much energy to put him out. Put, but what have they done for helping, for finding his place in this association? We would like just to live together as a family because we need him. Okay? Yeah, you said they started to terrorize me because of the... Um, what Can you tell about yourself now? You said you would? Just at the point uh, on this time for more than three years what, where the policeman ar arrested us. Um, he was more than a half an hour in, in his car. So that was on April the 8th, 2011, 11 hours and 40 minutes, so about half past 11 in the morning in Bergdorf. Yeah. He stays a long time in his car and when he came out he, he he would be changed. He um, he tried to take your camera away. He would uh, he changed to be ag aggressive, and he tried to hit you and hit you. And all because nothing because you, you was really really kind before you try you say hello to the police officer you shake him the hand, and so on and he just re reagate he just change because maybe he became his order how they have to do after he, t um, he came out of his car yeah he hit you did he lie yeah he lied because he, he's uh, he told after that you would be aggressive and so on because but the other way around, what the reason he he would be aggressive, not you. So at the moment when when you were there, did he lie too? I mean, uh, he, he said that he said you're gonna have a complaint for threatening me. Is is that a lie? Did he lie? I mean, wasn't it the other way around? He threatened me. Yeah, sure. Because you 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 was friendly. You was um, correct. So he pushed me. He hit me. And what did I do? You say hello and you shake him. I, I didn't do anything, no. didn't I? No. That's why. He I didn't defend myself. I, I had to have myself hit by this yeah. aggressive cop, sir. That's why I told you they need more than three years to change a lie or, or to, try, uh, to try to change yeah. a lie. So that was Hans Rudolf Kuni and the other one was Erika Kunz. Yeah. Okay. So you just said that the. Um, uh, they're doing this because I'm telling the world about the uh, on YouTube about things but that's only the last four years I've been on YouTube and actually I've been on YouTube because uh, because of this Swiss terror I started to think and um, I'm asking for help but there is no help you get only more terror if you open up your mouth and uh, that's why I started it so we have been together for 15 years so that leaves open another 11 years did they terrorize me in this time? Did they put yeah. me in prison? 
They don't help you, they put you out wherever they can. Yeah, so the reason is not that I do my YouTube videos, they already did it before. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so the policemen, they are liars. They just lied. You were there, you heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do you think, you're, sorry, you already told me, uh, they're doing this to, to put me as an immigrant, to put me away in prison? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they terrorizing your whole family? I mean, do you need me here? Yeah, that's why I told we need you to stay, that you can stay with us, because when I'm working, you look after the little child. And that's really, um, that's really, uh, yeah. You have to stay here because you have you you are part of us. You're part of this family. So they're not just terrorizing me, but they're terrorizing the whole family. No, because I, I see how how you have to live, how you feel, and so on. That's why they terrorize the whole family. Yeah. No. Uh, can I just go outside and walk around and go and play some soccer with the boys or? No, you have. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it's not. It's not possible at the moment. Yeah. So I've, I've been like a prisoner here for three and a half years then. Mm. Yeah, is there anything else you'd like to say here? No. You want to ask for help because the, the, the system here in Switzerland doesn't work apparently. Mm -hmm. So we got only YouTube left, you know, and the transparency. You want to ask for help for somebody else because here they're a bunch of liars. If it give, gives help, it yeah, would be a really, really emergency. Yeah? So this is my son, he's almost, uh, my younger son, he's almost uh, 13 years old. Um, can you tell me what your name is? Rivan. And how old are you? 12 years. Uh, do you understand English? Yes. Yeah, so he's having English in school. So you remember on April the 8th, 2011, at 11 hours and 40 minutes, so half past 11 roughly, in Bergdorf, um, did the policeman did he did he hit me? Yes. Was he aggressive? Yes. Um, did you see him going into his car and going on and and being on the telephone for about half an hour? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have still any uh, confidence in the police? Um, no. Wait a minute. Um, it's maybe a bit complicated. Yeah, so, um, do you still have any confidence in the Swiss police? No. Do you want, for, do you want to ask for help here to the international community so the Swiss terror will stop? Yes. Okay. Well, his English is, he's just learning, so. So this is my eldest son here, the one I can still see. He's living with us. He's 14 years old and a half. He's about, he's more than six feet tall. Wow. Um, his name is, uh, well, what is your name? Killian. Okay, that's a Celtic name. Uh, how old are you? 14 years old. Yeah, and a half. Yeah, enough. doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, what happened on the day, what, how can you remember that, the day like three and a half years ago on, on April the 8th, 2011, at about half past 11 in the morning when, with the two policemen? Did they, uh, did they hit me? Or, yes. or did, did the one hit me there? Yeah, they do. Was he aggressive? Where? Uh, how did I... Um, Behave? Did I say Z? Was I polite to him? Yes, that's true. Uh, did I uh, did I shake his hands? Yeah, also. 
Uh, then he went into the car. What did he do in the car? Um, they call and became the spoke, yeah. Yeah, so he was on the telephone in the car? Exactly. How long was he in the car? How um, long? 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Could be. Maybe, yeah. Half an hour, 40 minutes, yeah. And all this time, uh, what did we have to do? Or what did you, you know? Wait in the car. Yeah. yeah. Was it hot? Very. Yeah. And um, was mommy pregnant? Was she having the baby? Yeah. Yeah, they, and the police, they didn't care about this. Yeah. Safe call. Yeah. Um, so this was the policeman, a very aggressive and dangerous lying cop. His name was Hans Rudolf Kuni. It's, uh, thank God he's dead, so he can't hurt any more people. And the other one was Erika Kunz. This one should be in prison. Um, so did the policeman, did he lie? or did? Where? Lie, any yeah. lie. Yeah. Uh, later on, uh, we got arrested for nothing. Another time, in the when was that? At the petrol station. Um, twenty eighth of December, two two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> were they aggressive as well? Yeah, aggressive. Did they have? What were they showing? What were they have uh, carrying? Um, they want to um, see my um, identification and they um, walk around with a um, picture of my father. Yeah, you see I'm not a criminal, yeah. just for political reasons, they want to hang on something to me and they're walking around with my picture, you know, the drug dealers, the, the Swiss banksters, they don't do anything. and the and the Swiss child molesters, but you know, for political reasons, uh, Swissy, he's uh, you know walking around with my picture. So uh, I I, did, I decided not to go out anymore. You know, well they were aggressive. You know, like you know I had to take all my, uh, but not as aggressive as uh, Hans Rudolf Kuni, who was hitting me and all this. But anyway, they tried to provoke me, and they say like. Um, are you on drugs or something, you know? <laughs> well, I never used any drugs in my life and they know it very well, you know? Before the torture, I never even drank any alcohol. Yeah. So, um, do you still have any um, confidence in the police? No, not more. No? Why? They are lie. Mm-hmm. And they are, yeah, aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. So all your life, you're now 14 years and a half, you lived under this Swiss uh, terror, is that right? That's right. Yeah. So we cannot go, and, uh, go out and play some soccer, you know. Yeah. Uh, does, how, how do you feel this? How do you live with this? It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stress. Huh? Stress. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know it's difficult because uh, you've got the braces, yes, yeah. exactly. Probably. And English is not your native language, right? That's true, yeah. Yeah, but you're doing fine. Uh, do you want to ask for help? Somebody helps, you know, because the Swiss system doesn't work. Well, it works, but, you know, not honestly, it, it, it works for them. But do you want to ask help on YouTube if somebody help, you know, stop this terror? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is Alvina. It's my daughter. She's um two and a half years old, plus it's going to be three soon. Alvina? Hello. <laughs> and uh, well you hear all the noise there there's construction all over. There's construction. There's a construction. 
You can hear them. Sometimes it's so bad, you know, we can't even go out. There's a crane here. They're working on the house there. Up here. And there's a big a big construction site here behind. Which I'll show it to you. So sometimes, you know, we cannot even go out at all because it's just too noisy. And because because of the Swiss police terror. Uh, we are not allowed to go and have a little walk because the police will come immediately as they have already done like last year I think it was November the 28th that was the first time in many years that I went out and immediately the police came with their guns and everything they just forced themselves into the house so I put this here so, so they can't, you know, like storm in with their cars and endanger my little girl here. And with their guns drawn and put some guns on my head as I already done before. Just based upon lies. No reason at all. So, we're living like, you know, this is like World War II, you know. It's, she's like little Anna Frank. Little Anne Frank in Switzerland. And Nazism in Switzerland. Oh man, it's blossoming here. Yes, it is. They're building three concentration camps. And uh, if you open up your mouth about it, they send an anti terrorist squad. I don't know where the anti is actually. It's just a terrorist squad, a plain terrorist squad. They've done it to me in 2011. Since then, it's, it's almost four years. I've been under house arrest, you know, because they just lie things together, you know, for the criminal to lie the the, uh, the criminal statistic on immigrants and foreigners like myself, you know, up in the air, so they can achieve more laws in Parliament. Actually, the word Parliament is French, Parlement, and that means parler, parler. That means to talk. Mon is for mentir, and that means to lie. A parliament is talk and lie. And especially in Switzerland it's the case. You know, damn liar politicians. So, that's my little Anne Frank. My little girl Alvina, which is a Germanic name. Which means the friend of the elves. My two boys have Celtic names. Kilian and Riwan. Well, they have been living their whole lives under Swiss Nazi terror. Yeah, they're quite fed up with it. They know how the Swiss police, how they're a bunch of liars and crooks, aggressive. Um, and uh, they will start opening, opening up their mouth about it. And they tell the truth. And as I put in my last film, on Gure, Auschwitz made in Switzerland. They got their dirty little fingers in everything, you know, under that Swiss neutrality swindle smile. So you can hear, you know, what a, what a noise it is here. So me and my little girl, Anne Frank, you know, sometimes we can't even go outside at all. due to the Swiss Nazi terror. I would go and out and go out and have a stroll, but then the neighbors will call the police as they, you know, as they do. And uh, then they come with all their violence and try to lie something together, you know, to put the immigrant in prison. Alvina, hello. Today, October 25th, 
2014, it was even in the Swiss newspapers that Swissy wants to completely abolish international rights and human rights precisely in conjunction with the three Swiss concentration camps they have built. Simultaneously with Swiss Nazi Ebola at the same time, Swiss banks financing the Islamic State in Wahhabi Qatar and actually occupying all key positions in the USA by their Swiss Octagon Police Blue Army gunning down Americans with Swiss Sieg Sauer weapons. This will open all doors for Swissy to officially torture and kill immigrants in their newly built concentration camps and apply the sheriff's, sheriff's law only. A thing they've been doing already in their typical sly Swiss hiding motors. So here's the newspaper's witness account on how the Swiss are trying to legalize their crimes against humanity, which until now they just hid while smiling like some serial killer. And it's a shame to be driven by terror to the internet's transparency and ask for help by presenting oneself and family like in a shop window because the system of Switzerland works like a corrupt fascist mafia. And due to the very high rate of innocent people getting suicided in the Swiss prisons, I would like to state one more time that I have no suicidal thoughts, no depressions, no intentions to aggress or hurt anyone else, that I take no drugs, pills or medications and never have and have no need for any psychiatry on Swiss Nazi orders. I have about one month left maybe and funny enough November the 10th is the end of World War I now celebrated while well, the beginning a uh, hundred years ago. The next day on the 11th is the armistice as these guys are into numbers and occult rituals, you know, where they celebrate the death of nine million soldiers and, and, and the, uh, the Spanish flu coming afterwards with another 50 million dead before going for the final kill. I'll try to make some more videos before the deadline. And if not, don't forget me and make it known what these wicked Swissies did.